Okay, creators, I have rarely shared some photos of my work outside of YouTube with you. Here are some examples. This photo session of a retired painter, which is a neighbor of ours in his dusty workshop, and this other set of wedding photos for a friend that she asked me to take as a favor. Okay, unless you were a bit distracted and didn't read the title of this video, all of this is a lie, as all of these photos have been generated with artificial intelligence. But I would not blame you if just by a mere second I made you doubt or made you believe that these were actual photos of real people in real situations. These are the levels that have been obtained by image generation and artificial intelligence which is just getting started. What's up creators, I hope you're doing well, happy new year to all of you and for this first video I wanted to start out with something a bit more casual and laid back from the usual tutorials and I saw that Mid Journey updated its server to the v6 version and I said why not try it out. Now if you're not familiar with Mid Journey, it's an AI generating tool that can create images from a text or descriptive text that you introduce. So it's very straightforward, very simple. Now the results by generating images with this tool can vary. Sometimes the images or the photos, they're very realistic. They can basically confuse the most uh, skilled eye. In other cases, in particular with female models, you can notice that they look like dolls. They're a bit too symmetric. They're a bit too perfect and the skin is just flawless. In other cases, the images look a bit more oriented towards renders of video games, uh, for example, Unreal Engine or something like that. And in other cases, it just misses the mark completely. For example, with hands, it has a very harsh time in just generating hands correctly. Sometimes it adds a sixth finger. Sometimes it intersects the hands with one another and just looks completely weird. In general terms, it's AI it's bound to do some mistakes but it's an interesting tool nonetheless now just a little parenthesis so you guys can see the settings that i introduced in order to generate the most realistic images because i know that a lot of creators on the internet are very secretive with the prompts that they introduce and it's very straightforward really with the v6 version so right here i have the server booted up on discord and first of all uh, the settings with the diagonal you can select settings it will open up this little window and the first thing that you want to change is the motor uh, change the to the v6 instead of the default 5.2 and then you're basically good to go uh, in this case i have selected raw mode and it's not raw photography what it will do is just uh, experiment a bit less and be a bit more aligned with the text that you introduce so right here you can see uh, this prompt that i introduced for these uh, set of images full body portrait it's not a full body portrait i missed the mark right there um, from the back of the beautiful russian female model looking out a big window in media format sunlight backlit 16 mil that's the focal distance that will determine how wide or how narrow it sometimes does not uh, take this into account sometimes it does uh, black and white photography indoor portrait and then these two minus marks indicate uh, uh, parameter and the ar is aspect ratio so right here is a four by five so it creates a four by five image and as you can see up here i have a 21 by 9 and it creates a 21 by 9 png image so basically that's it you have to be very descriptive and you can create an incredible diversity of images for example right here i created this set of images and the prompt uh, i'm going to read it to you so the prompt is backshot portrait of a criminal mastermind sitting in a laboratory backlit plans and schemes in the walls at the style of christopher nolan 35 millimeter aspect ratio 21 by 9 and it created this image and then obviously i changed a bit of the text to create the different images then for example right here we have these ones that I created at the style of dark from the Netflix series. And then obviously I put it up on Lightroom to apply some of my presets, the moody presets, and then it just looks fantastic. In other cases, this one at the style of Interstellar. Over here, it's a very simple prompt, just street photography of the 90s in New York, a film style. Obviously the film grain, I added it in post edition, but you can basically play around and achieve images like these ones, or for example, this Middle Eastern woman with the head covered with high detail in the eyes and achieve these types of images. So as you can see, the results vary, the quality varies, the realism varies, but it is a very interesting tool, but is it practical? Is it useful and how would you use it? Now, as we know, AI has just started to take over a lot of systems in the world. For example, AI in China is used widely by the government to control or to monitor security and also the citizens. There are thousands of cameras throughout the city that detect every move by every citizen and have a very powerful um, eye detection system that basically detects what you're doing. If you commit a crime or if you park your car illegally, you can immediately get reported. 
and to the, the respective authority. And that's a way to control. And everything is systematized. So there's basically little to no intervention from a human being in that process. It's all AI. In my world, for example, in architecture, you can use AI for parametric design or for parametric renders. For example, you introduce some descriptive text, then it generates some option. You select the option and you can go into detail until you have the design that you want. In other worlds, in video creation or content creation, I've seen these uh, terrible videos um, shorts on YouTube of AI generated images with voice to text generated text or generated audio on top, just looping around and just saying the same thing over and over again. But for photographers and for filmmakers, I don't see where this tool is very useful. Uh, why? Because photography, filmmaking, it all depends or start off with the imagination, with the image that you have in your brain and being able and capable of reproducing that image in the physical world, either in a still or a motion picture. So I don't think it's very useful. It is fun to work with. Now, one area where I do see um, this tool being potentially dangerous for a job is the conceptual designers. Filmmakers have their conceptual designers, they hire them so they can basically create the world for their movies, for the science fiction, fantasy, whatever it was. And basically they draw out, they paint out these wonderful places, wonderful artworks and costumes. And then the director comes and decides which one they want, which route they want to take. And this is basically what Mid Journey does. You input some text, just like the director would, and then it prints you some four, four or five options. You select the one that you want, and then you can expand from that one. So it's basically the same job as a conceptual designer. And yeah, that's the job that's at risk, I think. But we always have to remind ourselves that these are just the first steps of artificial intelligence being introduced into the public. We don't know where this will be in 10 years or in 15 years or in 20 years. For me, this tool, Midjourney in particular, would be useful for me if you could export images with a lot more information. Right now, the images that you can save are PNG files. I would love if you could export DNG or raw files so you can edit them. And that will create a lot of images for me for to create tutorials and also to create presets out of it. But in these moments, it's not very useful, just fun. So there you have it guys, a little peek into realistic image generation with Mid Journey 6. Let me know in the comment sections, what's your opinion or your take on artificial intelligence in general is something that you embrace and you want to implement into your life to make things easier or is it something that you want to repel and you basically want to live like a hobbit in the shire away from all technology and just living a simple life.